Hello, everybody, and good morning, good evening, and uh, um, good afternoon to those people which are in that time zone. Welcome to your own screen, and we are extremely happy to uh, welcome you, even that we have some slight little challenges to broadcast to all of our channels. We are excited that we have today Detlef Adels, um, a known expert on the unified communication area. And if it's coming to voice, voice communication, um, publisher of the Voice Compass for ages, and also for the practical tips on utilization on software selection and other interesting topics. Um, a former colleague, now a friend for several ages and years, we have published a book together, the Auntie Emma uh, 4.0 uh, principle. And um, the German is easier, Tante Emma 4.0. And the aspects, how this has to do with CRM and communication and some other aspects. That should be the intro from my starting point. And we invited Detlef because his team and himself have taken a very typical journey for over 25 years or even longer. Um, Detlef is a user of CRM solutions or was going to become a hardcore user of a CRM solution and started like a lot of other people as in them themselves with something in between before it was a CRM solution. Now, Detlef, uh, tell us a bit about you. Welcome to our show. The floor is yours now and let's rock that. Yeah, um, great to be here. Um, love to be on the virtual stage. Um, about myself, I'm running my company since uh, 2003, my actual company. And 10 years before, I started with my system integration company for all kind of voice technology. Nowadays, it would be AI stuff because we did voice recognition, which is some kind of AI. And uh, some years before, I started uh, to earn money by programming things on databases, on different other things to um, yeah, earn your living as a student. But nowadays, since 20 years, since 2003, we have Ike's Vox. It's a name we created while building that company. It's a mixture from the city where we are living. It's Ike's La Chapelle or Aachen, Aachen as a city, and which is quite fresh with all the students we have and Vox for the auditive stuff we are in. And um, there we mainly help companies to understand latest technology in whatever matter, mainly using it for have a better, more efficient or more to the point communication in service centers, in small or big companies using more than just video meetings to do your daily job and find a new way of work with your team in whatever you do yeah so from there um i started early with crm systems and you started a rocket yeah well yeah. starting a rocket is uh, the observation that you are a long time in the market and that you have uh, gained some observations own impressions and experiences yeah uh, and some good and bad uh, experiences about different kind of CRM systems to come to the topic of this evening. Would you mind sharing your starting point? When did you start in the data collection and how did you do it? To be honest, and you made me thinking about this just 50 minutes before as we started with our conversation here to prepare everything, even way before I started with my first company, because as a student, I was building a database for a, a people hiring company uh, first on Microsoft Access 2.0 and later on on a, a system called Superbase. 
which disappeared after that as well. Um, so yeah, and going back to the professional side where I used it for my own companies was somewhere mid 90s where we started with a system called Lotus Notes. And um, Thomas already showed his big love to this uh, special system. And uh, I love the smiling. Um, we had it for around a year. Then I said, well, uh, no, not longer, please. Um, as we, we were a, a team, even that time, of, of developers, of not salespeople. And it was a little bit painful to maintain all this. Um, even if this was maybe state of the art at this time, we decided to uh, go into another direction or using less CRM for a while. And what was then the next step? I think we spent some time with um, systems in between. We, we didn't have thousands of clients with little invoices or whatever. So we, we spent uh, more time with an ERP system where we had our minimal amount of uh, CRM data because at this time we didn't make any big activities or campaigns on social media or other things. So it was more really customer information we stored there. And we didn't collect it all the telephone calls that time, even as we use CTI functionality uh, in the CRM, um, even that time already. And um, from, from there, we played around a little bit with a system called VTiger because yeah. it was cheap. It does a job, but it, look, it looks a little bit awful and usability and VTiger in one sentence always created some pain. Which brings me to now that I'm mentally there as the link to LinkedIn, pun not intended, seems to be broken. What is the expectation you have to a CRM system? Yeah, good question. This was growing by using, and probably this was another pain point in um, the whole story. First of all, we said, well, we need to collect the data and the information we have with our clients and prospects. Easy. If you have a system integration mm -hmm. company with 20 or 25 invoices per month, it's overlooking. Mm -hmm. um, later on, we started doing more social media, doing more fairs, doing more marketing things. And I always come back with a bunch of business cards. And somebody, most of the time not me, has to put it into the system. And then we try to see if there's a valid contact, is there a sales funnel or other activities. So the typical stuff you do uh, as a company of 10, 15 people. Even at My, that time, um, we had, yeah, we had the opportunity that uh, a company called CardScan, which was at that time themselves, then later Dymo, giving the first hand in a solid approach to scan in the business cards into dedicated systems from ACT to a bunch of systems where you then either directly or through a workaround through Outlook could get the data into your related CRM system. So um, VTiger at that time, if I recall right, 2006, 2007, when I compared it to at that time version of Salesforce, it wasn't as ugly as some other stuff I knew, but it was at least as sexy as Salesforce at that time yeah. and knowing just, my just name uh, the company involved of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, such a pain <clears throat> sap or uh the at that time the marketing manager from update.com or uh, uh, at that time i was no longer employed with uh, team rendel which their product vincard was at that time also not the sexiest looking stuff but um, the idea was not to collect 
but also to retrieve the data in one system and that you have not a bunch of, like you showed us, business cards flying around or lead sheets, mm -hmm. but that you have a centralized approach and that you even in the smartest systems at that time already could partly um, integrate a sales methodology. Yeah. In the old Salesforce, you had, for, uh, for instance, um, uh, one of these super power selling stuff integrated in the machine deck. Yeah. So if you went down to the machine room, it was uh, there hard coded inside. And um, after they have changed to the new layout, Lightning, um, that was interesting because then it disappeared. You no longer could utilize it. And there are still a lot of fans, if I recall right, the user comments, which are still using some classic environment and utilizing the classic um, UI instead of the Lightning UI because they have programmed a lot of stuff into that, customized, it's properly called, because um, I would uh, dare to uh, tell that a normal user is uh, hard coding an Apex. Yeah? Um, interesting enough, Superbase was a very interesting point you mentioned, such as that was one of the first systems which had the capability that you could get pictures in information additionally inside, which I sometimes missed in the latest CRM systems, such as the first steps in SAP, when um, SAP was, uh, let, let's add, um, lately um, bought Kiefer and Feitinger, where the roots from Thomas are with, and then they started developing a lot. They got some people after they have bought or invested, to be more precise, in Orbis, and Orbis became um, an a SAP-owned entity, and they started to chit-chat a lot about what's happening in the CRM market. At that time, I guess, the, after the V-Tiger approach, what was your next step? Um, going back in history, I think we played around a lot around the things we had with Outlook, and we were running a, a local exchange 2 dot something which was as well quite painful in maintaining it and uh, using it for the stuff we did and um, we, we did the same thing we we always collected our telephone to it to see who called when to see if we called back and uh, all these things and nowadays if, if i go into projects where we should help companies we see companies working in, in millions, they don't have CTI yet, 2023. And I said, well, how, how could you work? So uh, we maybe we come from telephony, we, we love to do this. We had it always. And um, a while later, we, we started with some dynamics on premise. Logic, if you work with Outlook, you already, mm -hmm. already play a little bit with um, the early exchange versions, um, this was the next thing. But as well, it was working, so to say, and not really loved by the technical people where someone is um, doing this between the normal job, maintaining it, and so on. And uh, from a salespeople, um, we had one or two guys who were responsible to keep the data actual. And we had the, the, the big uh, problem guy, mainly me, who is coming with new data every day and not updating everything all the time. So I, I feel guilty. Yes, I do. Um, I edited some more Excel sheets and gave it to other people, say, well, we did this, put it into the system. So all the stories you probably know from all the other projects. We did it, yeah. Mm -hmm. It and wasn't so, the best. So your main reason for going dynamics was it fits well into an exchange and outlook infrastructure. 
Yeah, that was the idea at least. Mm -hmm. So did that at least pan that idea at least pan out? Yeah, we worked with it quite a few years. Um, mm -hmm. I still didn't felt in love with it. It's nice to mm -hmm. see some funnel mm -hmm. visualizations mm -hmm. of uh, what you might do, who you met on which mm -hmm. event, and mm -hmm. uh, we, we never data tracked everything down at mm -hmm. the end. Uh, we might get some more activity out of this, but during mm -hmm. that time, we, we doubled uh, each year the, the revenue from our company in selling mm -hmm hardware and software and other things. So, yeah, there is a CRM. Somebody has to do it. And we didn't follow really on that. So you said you didn't really feel, uh, fall in love with it. What prevented you from liking that system? What did you dislike? To, to, and what to did be, you like, by the way? To, to be <laughs> honest, spending my time to entering data into a system um, after each call was limited for me to two sentences of what happened in that call mm -hmm. um, and not really to updating uh, the potential sales approach or the numbers or the product because it was too mm -hmm. it was not elegant to grab mm -hmm. the data to it and, and yeah, we, we, we didn't mm -hmm. customize it to the end um, mm -hmm. where um, many other companies spend uh, hours, months, or even more time to make mm -hmm. it very special to what you do. So I was always a big fan of using it with not too much integration work, which might mm -hmm. be wrong, but um, this is how we did it. Yeah, But we, we got our overview, overview out of it, and maybe not all the details. At a certain time, that was um, a smart approach, such as as you had the Outlook integration, and it was for cheap money that you could get that business card scanner. And yep. uh, with that business card scanner, a lot of people normally did not read properly the instruction or the manual because there they would have learned that at that stage, which is around about 2003, 2005, that system had an information grabber included such as if you had a boilerplate and an email or you went to a website you could grab some of the core informations mm -hmm. which made life a bit easier yeah we we used a lot of this i even had one of these scanners because uh, i was even in that time quite often hired as a speaker or moderator and uh, Sabit uh, brings hundreds of these little paper things home um, and as well a lot of headaches from all the parties, but it's a different story. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it was like it was and and um, we used it as good as we like, I would say, not can. Mm. We could do more, a lot of a lot more, but um, nobody was willing really and we met during that years ralph on on yeah, different yeah. events I, you were I remember cm expo yeah yeah and uh, um crm expo hanover um, we we joined a few times uh, booths and and even evening activities somewhere in hanover or around so yeah but um it it helped to to at least have an overview of what could be uh, what was there? Where do we met someone? But um, it was not really merged to the ERP system which we had in that time. Then again, you have to uh, copy the data after you sold something into another system, and hmm. didn't made it more lovely to use. And after you have um, gained your experiences with Microsoft CRM at that uh, time as an on-premises uh, solution, um, I, I guess in the version 3.0, 4.0 roundabout, because you have had some connections to Microsoft and Microsoft partners at that time, so that going forward in the Microsoft solution world was not too hard, but, um, as I often say to my customers or have that saying, the better is the enemy of the good. 
um, which was the next one you tried to explore to get? I, I think I think I might miss one or two of our tries in the middle, but I, I really remember that we went into the direction of um, Microsoft Dynamics Online where we uh, used the first online versions and um, but then only for a little team uh, that years we we worked really price sensitive and said we we don't want to uh, burn so much money on a CRM because um, we, we didn't saw that time the big use so we had three four people on a license there and uh, just started to going more into a direction and then they said no we will double the price of the license per month <laughs> so what mm. oopsie oh, this, this is quite a common phenomenon <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, 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 we, we were sitting there that well uh why <laughs> <laughs> it, it is especially since cloud gets so popular, one has the impression that you are in an environment of legalized robbery and assault. Yeah, you have you are on drugs. Yeah, your dealer is selling you the right uh, system, and then it's very hard to get the change done into another world. It was harder even on the on-premises world. Whereas the advertising is promising you that it is quite easy to move cloud systems. But what is your experience with when you had Microsoft in the cloud and you wanted to go to another cloud system? How did that you get? An, it's a nightmare to export data from there. Um, Lovely. I want to hear more about it I, because it, it's we, not we, only a Microsoft problem. It is with all these chaps, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm with the Eco Institution for Internet Technology since I don't know 15 or more years, yeah. and uh, w whenever I look into systems, um, th there should be a contract part on how to get data out of a system again. Entering data is easy. You put in, 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 but get it in a structured format out of the system is something a typical vendor doesn't focus on. It's not something, uh, why? Go with yeah, me why, until why, the end. Why should, they why, should, why should they focus on it? <laughs> they, yeah. they want to have you. <laughs> yeah, but you. In, in the, in the, progress or in, in the phase of selecting the right solution. It might be an interesting topic to have mm -hmm. that uh, part on your list. You know, we, we do a lot of uh, selecting solutions for customer service, yeah. which talks directly mm -hmm. to the CRM mm -hmm. and to the ERP and to other solutions. So there, uh, I always have contact with this. And mm -hmm. um, when people choose a new system, they at least nowadays, think about, I mm. put all my data in, is there a, a typical connection or a, a set of activities I could push a button and then my data comes more or less structured out of the system, maybe in yeah. different tables with some, some SQL stuff or in a big, big uh, Excel sheet or wh whatever. Yeah, so this should be at least while you look for new systems, at least for my understanding, an interesting part to have this available mm -hmm. in five years. Uh, well, talking a bit derogatively here, so now you looked in your long list and short list at this as a requirement or a user story, and they all say, well, it's somehow possible, but not really. And which makes it pretty irrelevant for the selection because they're all similarly good there. Yeah. How to how to get it into the contract then if we are following this detour now for, for a second? Because that's where it really becomes interesting. A again, I did it into the contract that I get my data that you get your data out of the system again 
fairly easy. Yeah, as, as I said, it was my luck that early mm -hmm. times we understand di databases. And so mm. we found a way to get most of the data mm. out of it in some way. Mm. On the other hand, we said, well, the data over there is not so interesting anymore. Why don't we get just the important clients mm. Mm. addresses, people who didn't change until now and mm. put this into a new system. And what we learned there with, with a, latest stuff and now we come to more or less this year we spent some time from the end of last year to i think mid of this year searching for something which would fit to us as a mm. cloud solution mm. and where we stay more or less with uh, way they said you might work best with a CRM. So we only add a minimal amount of mm. our own integration or customization work into it. Mm. That was an interesting journey after all the years working with different other CRM systems. And uh, we had a deeper look into uh, different ones uh, uh, one nice one which we really liked was uh, Freshworks. We had another uh, look into into one or two others, even smaller ones. Mm -hmm. I don't have the names in mind uh, because it was not my role to research them, um, but um, my colleague did it. Um, and uh, we, we ended up after comparing just in a simple way uh, monthly cost or yearly cost to functions mm -hmm. to possibilities in the future. So we didn't mm -hmm. drill down all this to the nitty gritty details uh, in the third corner um, function. So we said, well, might work. Price is fair. Mm -hmm. And um, we see that they are open with a lot of APIs and other things that you could mm -hmm. connect to more or less what you find on a way. And uh, we, we ended up with Soho, uh, a system um, I had in mind, um, or I met a few times before already and never mm -hmm. really took an eye on. And during that research, I talked to more and more little companies, and we are a little company with around 10 people. Um, and some of them as well did it. Another friend was just using a part of Soho for some social activities. Another friend was using that part from Soho. And so I started wondering a little bit. Um, so we started with this. And uh, that was an uh, easy, good choice. Yeah. We created uh, um, three different pipelines with um, different... Um, uh, products we are offering um, to have a better overview for this, but this was easy. And uh, then we we created a few little reports uh, when some activity happens, and we worked in all the swim lanes um, and moved uh, projects from one lane to another one whenever there was a call or some changes and a little little routine which send an email if a project is won to everyone in the team, yeah. uh, generating a big smile to mm. uh, um, all the people. And from there, um, my, my colleague uh, is doing all this. Uh, Christine is handling all this with her knowledge um, of different other uh, systems. And um, we will do more like this because it's easy. We can maintain a lot by ourselves. And then even the, the support hotline in uh, lovely India is uh, active. Um, I just had a call with, with her before we started here, and she said, well, I was needing a little formula, a little snippet of code for doing something special. And uh, she called that guys, and we need a funny accent of English, more funny than my one probably. 
Um, differently funny. <laughs> differently funny. Yeah. Um, we 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 solved the problem in a little time and not with ten more engineers running around doing crazy stuff. So um, it, for for us, it's really simple, easy, web driven, adaptable to other services with uh, the email functionality and we really use only the, the 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 base stuff of it not the the high special functions we we do mailing with it we have our forms integrated mm -hmm. in a website with it uh, mm -hmm. so that if there is some activity on that event people get mm -hmm. one of the free book from us and leave their data and it mm -hmm. goes directly into the cm so all these things are connected how it should be connected in a connected mm -hmm. world in close to 24. Mm -hmm. what did you sign up for two which users plan? which two users which plan mm -hmm. i think so, the smallest one so you went for begin or for, did you go for crm begin or crm plus um, or whatever other stuff to do it as, other way around we, we pay around 1k a year you might know which plan it is for two users and um it's what yeah. we say huh? yep <laughs> okay i have an i have an idea now <laughs> looks like i'm on a similar plan <laughs> okay <laughs> it worked <laughs> yeah it works yeah and yeah. it offers quite a lot so basically you you yeah. are not on the on the little plan then no, it's me. I think the medium plan, not the the biggest oh, yeah, one. But it looks like you're actually on a one subscription then, so that, that you have the whole game of applications. Yeah, yeah we, we we have this. I would say second or third level of subscriptions mm. you can mm. do for a user of fifty bucks or something more per month, mm. uh, something like this. Mm. Yeah. So that and, is... and this again is the value a little company mm. might mm. be accepting yeah mm -hmm. and whenever we do more with it we might add to more users for mm. students for other people or mm. so on yeah. but at the moment we check the reports in a monthly meeting with a team there is no need for another user yeah. uh, whenever there is a deal one uh, there is an email as well with all the contact details going to our mm. uh, um ERP um, bookkeeping um, team and they grab the data, still grabbing, copying mm. it uh, into that system and doing invoices. We don't deal with that system because all the German tech stuff, it's another uh, pain point I love. I mm. can give you a little update on that one. Um, okay. Zoho Books was introduced in uh, late September, early October so that you can do some stuff what you would have done with your tax and accounting system till now also doing invoices collecting and this you could do and uh, you could save the money on calendly if you use zoho bookings which is yeah. uh, a very cool one um, and integrated as well in there and um, if christine with her hubspot knowledge and in loving to do marketing automation mm -hmm. and is enjoying that very much from earlier business lives and also looking into that selection process in where is HubSpot strong, where is Zoho, what you decided to go for, even more useful for you. It's an interesting aspect to see that with Zoho Social, Zoho Market, uh, automation and and some bits and pieces which is you are in one stack you don't um switch in worlds you are staying in one world and even the ui is more or less alike to a certain degree yeah yeah, yeah this is something we might have a look into it i would surely not look into change the EIP and uh, tax system at the moment because this creates too much other pain. But yeah. a, a nice API would be nice so that one cloud system could send something to the next cloud system or an easy import might be lovely um, to get the data set there and put it yeah. into this. Um, 
But to be honest, we 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 have bigger projects. We don't sell 10 euro products and so on. So if if we we do an invoice, it's mainly more than 1k euro. Um, so then um, either we have already the client as we work with a lot of clients together and adding two times a month manually some data from that system to another system. Hey, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Automation makes sense if there's lots of repetitive tasks. So if, <laughs> yeah. if it's only a little a little bit, then well, it's not those so expenses, much the expenses into uh, the expenses of automating it are probably it, um, uh, higher. Doing it. So if the ROI is beyond 20 years, then you can probably do it manually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But but then most cloud systems do have APIs. So although with another client, I'm currently struggling with the invoicing system, <laughs> which we, we, we like have. to move it move it over to Lexware to Lex Office. <laughs> Which is in in Germany quite a common system, yeah, yeah. Uh, with as well a lot of open APIs. I, I didn't check if they have a Zoho integration or if you go through Sapier or other uh, uh, automation tools. Um, we will see. Uh, we might have a look in. Let, let's talk about that topic. So, <laughs> let me put it that way: that client has a Lexware, <laughs> and they <laughs> okay. and they. Ha- for invoicing right now and then they have a zimba as they are their um bookkeeping system combining that with a crm system the old one as well as the current one or the upcoming one is painful painful yeah <laughs> so you you probably don't want to go for the where part of legs <laughs> Well, the, the, the online part is uh, yeah. different. Uh, yeah. um, the the uh, Lex Office uh, line of products, yeah. which is really totally online. We started this many years ago, yeah. and it, it grows in function every few <clears throat> months, or have yeah. some some more connections to other tools. So for for a smaller company like or smaller customer crm customer like what are the challenges of of impl- the main challenges that you see when implementing your system so one of them that doesn't seem to be too big is integration to the finance system no we, because... we didn't look into that that direction yet and as mm. i said this is is not the, the pain point we mm. do a lot yeah. of uh, uh social media marketing we do mm. a lot of events we do a lot of other things so mm. getting the data from the clients into the system and into the mm. uh right um sales funnels is one of the major parts we are looking for or we, we have in, in in mind to automate this and then um mm. all the um yeah the the easy work on um, doing calls, doing emails out of the system. We we send newsletters out of the system already, uh, so we see who already got this. Uh, and by this, we are growing in functionality more and more by playing with it. Earlier, you said what's important for you is CTI. How about that? Many systems don't have a native CTI. Well, not not many do have. <laughs> so yeah, here here we did it quite simple. Um, I don't have many telephone calls, but I don't do the hardcore sales activities. Um, mm-hmm. Christine is working with a soft phone, and there's a connection uh, that she can uh, click a number and something dials. And this mm-hmm. is web based. And uh, um, finally, uh, the most one of the most looked up posts on our blog is how to automate uh, your website by clicking a telephone number on a browser. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, as we now work in a cloud environment, it's easy to click inside the CRM a number and then a dialer takes over and um, dials it. Uh, So, um, and it's for us, really more outbound because as well most of the communication which yeah. comes back from the clients is by mail or by having an appointment having an um, teams call zoom call webex call or with our own 
uh, software. We, we use Veeting for calling and for online meetings and have this information then manually added into mm. the CRM. If you look in future, mm -hmm. what I like to have integrated is all this um, coming from speech technology, uh, meeting um, text recognition, combining mm. it to tasks into mm. uh, CRM activities. So whenever, mm. like today, we have a talk, the CRM or another instance listen, um, see, hear what we talk, put it into text and uh, gives mm -hmm. us an easy way and our machines an easy way to search within that text, condense mm -hmm. it to topics we might set it should be the next activity, give mm -hmm. a human an interactivity to, okay, this is correct, this is correct, we have to change this here to, mm -hmm. in two weeks and so on. This is what I see is next on the radar. If you look nowadays and here my communication stuff is uh, calling into this uh, evening call, um, we see Microsoft is coming with recognition um, copilot. We see Zoom is coming with this, but there are many, many others doing this as well in a fair quality. Thinking back to 2006, whenever I wrote my first book about speech technology, why does, does it took so long? Yeah, well, an interesting, sorry. Just had a comment where it took so long because we are funny speakers. Yeah, such as um, we tested a bit um, how the transcript is working in Google Meeting. And we tested also, um, I found myself out of curiosity, how the transcript in Teams is operating and working. And out of that, you could extract, if you want, if there is a dedicated task or you do a summary in such a call where you put this as a part of the transcript, what are your next steps that could be done in an easy way or you have uh, dedicated solutions from yep. Cognig or, for instance, uh, one of the smaller partners in Mannheim just on the campus from the former um, Kiefer and Fighting Environment and from the university, Ali Ru is sitting there and has uh, developed something called Sally, the sales assistant, which is exactly... Uh, retrieving mm -hmm. data from your CRM, getting it into by speech into text into the CRM, and all these things which we find as salespeople extremely sexy. And if we are road warriors or mobile um, Bedouins, that um, we are smart to utilize the Apple gear as Thomas is favorizing it or. I still with my Android stuff um, to make my life a bit easier by retrieving and being up to date if something is happening on the road to the customer. Yeah, yeah. Um, speech is so much faster as typing. Um, this was more Trust or less me. For, I'm for a disaster <laughs> area in typing. Ask Thomas. I I'm typing. Mm -hmm. um, I think this was one of the first things I wrote into the Voice Compass books in 2006, as I said, wh where we explained all the base technologies um, of all these different things there. And people still uh, played around with Dragon Dictate 2.0 or something like this from uh, that time. It yeah. worked. Um, I, I did my first few books in a totally different way. I was sitting down um, making a mind map, um, structured it down to a segment of the books, creating a new mind map, painting a red line through it, and then I lay back and starting to dictate it. Um, having luckily some people who later on do German better as I, and um, made some correct Are sentences. Are you Swabian or what? <laughs> <laughs> now, this was still someone from the team 
uh, with uh, an exam in uh, German language and other things. Mm. Um, I will, don't have an exam, but I can talk technology. Uh, well, I was, was just thinking of their advertisement slogan, we can do everything but speak German. Yeah. This whole stuff gets in, ingrained in, in all CRM systems very, very soon. So yeah. it will um, come. If, if you see what yeah, uh, yeah. ChatGPT with uh, their um, speech recognition part is doing nowadays already, uh, you see the first uh, products showing up capturing this into a nice front end um, and and doing nothing else um, mm -hmm. we do this with the talks we do every week um, and um, I, I plan to redo the text out of two years of weekly talks for half an hour um, into something underneath the mm -hmm. um, youtube link or whatever because mm -hmm. machines can read it way better and you might get better results by getting um, it yeah. to the right point on Google. Well, YouTube does a transcription anyways. Yeah. So it's, it's, well, it sucks, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can, you can uh, easily copy it yeah. and uh, put it to another uh, AI yeah. tool and make it uh, yeah. sound nicer, get a... Um, something out of it but there are there are really other mm. things who do it better as this yeah. one it's free so you can't complain yeah. easy that's, work that's differently true. is your wednesday call is your show such as einfach anders arbeiten und einfach online arbeiten um, so what are your findings over the last two years if you come to the software selection processes you do for voice communication towards what you have established on your own software selection process. And unfortunately that Christine is not there that we ask her um, if she loves to type a comment into a functioning uh, system such as one of our Facebook pages, she is happily welcomed to do some comments. Yeah? Well, even um, better, she's probably keen to have a session with you again uh, going a little bit deeper into the uh, uh, the different processes we integrated uh, with pros and cons. Um, but um, we can do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah She'll she have to do it as well. So uh, uh, we, we will sort it out later on. Um, but mm -hmm. the, the first part of your question was again, please. Um, your experiences over the last two years how work has changed just work ah. differently is more or less the title and yeah. there you have um, also selection processes einfach anders arbeiten for all the germans who are listening in is mm -hmm. something i wrote together with many other people from vitra furniture from microsoft from i don't know 20 different knowledge people where we said way before pandemic started yeah. um, with all the technology we have we can do work in a really different way and we we might even use our offices in a different way and we had the pandemic to develop this further because the resistance of change in uh, the heads of so many people didn't allow it before means um, using even more events like this where we are three people from three total different loca locations talking to each other um, is now state of the art thinking back before 2020 telling somebody let's do a teams zoom webex whatever meeting they said well what come to my office yeah. we have nice furniture and coffee and mm -hmm. uh, even in that time we were doing our consulting uh, with with many companies going there meeting the team going for a beer in the evening creating the 
the atmosphere to be able to talk to each other, to work with each other. And then we do the work remotely by saving a lot of life quality, not sitting in not arriving trains or not sitting on crowded highways where, why? Yeah, but this as well needs a change in the technology you use, um, the rooms you are using for that. And we all see uh, there's a lot of office places you can rent nowadays because people reduced the office. We reduced ours as well. But the biggest pain point is, and we talk there about bricks, bytes, and behavior, the whole behavior part means even if we know what to do, changing people in using these tools is probably the same by changing people to use a CRM. Um, they are not willing to change. You need to have good examples and motivation. So you can buy a nice, colorful office with the best furnitures. You can buy the latest technology, cameras, microphones, whatever, but you can't buy the change with your team who might accept the way of different working. So in that environment, we do a lot, helping companies to understand that only if you develop the three things to the same level, the whole thing works. Where's the resistance highest? I mean, if you're coming from that angle, if I'm look, if I'm looking at the press right now, or into the press, I do see many a company of many an industry saying, "Okay, you guys get back to office or else." So where, where, where's the resistance? So the technology was there 2020, and apparently people they even bought houses somewhere in the middle of nowhere, plus a in satellite internet connection to work well. And now they are forced to get back into cramped offices. For my understanding, it's mainly command and control. I like to see the people. I like to see what they are doing. There is no logical thing to bring mm. them only back to mm. the office. Mm. It's hybrid what will rock the world there. So coming together every few weeks is mm. important to mm -hmm. have humans be with humans. So mm -hmm. in our little team, we do it latest every two months that we meet for mm -hmm. a day of work. Then we have one or two days of partying together or doing some other activities mm -hmm. together, socializing. Mm -hmm. And many of the decision makers in companies think this need to be way more. From my understanding, if you have the team which is already running around with that mindset and that mindset is something you can build mm -hmm. and learn on the way, uh, you can do it after a year or one and a half year easily with any kind of people if they are willing to change a little bit. It's nothing you can do from mm -hmm. today to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something you definitely have to have to do step by step with somebody who is putting the light into the right direction uh, or maybe the carrot or whatever mm. you like to uh, have the people following. And uh, from there, it's it's easy possible. And then you reach something totally different. You have way more happy people who come together once a month, every two months for a big gathering, um, joining it with fun and spending way more time and efforts and um power, my understanding, mm. on the work they do day by day, day by day, and not parking their car on a Deutsche Highway somewhere, because it's <laughs> annoying. I, I don't want to burn my time in going to an office every morning for an hour. It's mm -hmm. two hours a day. It's a, a working day a week. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I... I I go to clients and visit my clients somewhere. Then I have to travel to North Germany, South Germany, or other things. It's as well a lot of time traveling. But the normal working you can do um, close by in your home office or even mm -hmm. in a place which is close to your house. 
I see yeah. many people in in lovely countryside. They have an office in their village where everybody can join, where they as well have mm. some social connections yeah. um, with people not from their company. Yeah. Now, how does a coming back a little to our topic, or well, to our headline, <laughs> how does the CRM system help there? It, easy. You need a CRM yeah, system well, in the cloud okay. and you can work from anywhere. Yeah. yeah? And if you have connected this mm. with your online communication tools, mm. um, your online streaming or whatever tools, mm. it's easy. What you need is your notebook, mm. your tablet, your mm. whatever, and work from where you have internet. And if you look to the latest uh, statistics from today, mm. Germany is not the best place to have internet. We are on place 54 on a world uh, speed map of internet, way, 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 way behind all our neighbors. So whenever you go to somewhere in Thailand, you have way better internet as in Germany. We are the Better. developing country. No, yeah. don't, ins don't insult the developing countries, please. Uh, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> German is internet development country, I know, yeah. 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 Well, um, 2016, the chancellor said it's new territory. Was it 16? Yeah, it is still a new territory. <laughs> okay, fairly <laughs> enough, What? fiber optics is coming slowly, 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 but it's mm. coming. But um, yeah. to be honest, driving through a country like ours in 2023 and don't having a mobile connection in so many places, it's a shame, to be honest. And especially if you go so much time like you by train and spending extra time because they give you some extra time on their trains or in uh, staying <laughs> on, 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 on one on the track sites, Uh, yeah, on Bahnsteig. I just uh, didn't get the right word so fast. Uh, it would be nice to have a stable internet connection. Yeah, but what I did for myself, and I can only talk from my, my experience, whenever I know I have to travel to Berlin for six hours or to yeah. Munich or to Freiburg or Rostock is on the radar for... Uh, one of the next uh, weeks. I grab myself enough potential work on my notebook that I'm not re reliable on the internet connection I see mm -hmm. yet somewhere. And I don't care if I'm on that place an hour earlier, an hour later, because I plan enough time. And then the quality of traveling while sitting and mm. working with a headset where I don't hear all that other people yeah. or where I don't see what he is doing on his notebook mm. uh, or somebody sees on my notebook, it's relaxing. So I go an afternoon before I have a meeting on the next day because going on 4.30 in the morning, uh, being late or being squeezed to be on time, nah. Now, uh, maybe I'm too old for doing it. I don't know. But uh, I, I prefer to have my interesting travel time during vacations and not on business trips. Yeah, it makes, makes it too old of, of us. It shouldn't be too exciting when <laughs> running for the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and look. CRM is uh, wherever I can use it. And, and same to my uh, bookkeeping software. I have both on my mobile. I can I have mm. both on my tablet. I have both on my um, um, notebook. So open it, work. Given that there is an internet connection. Yep. <laughs> um, the interesting aspect is we had a subline such as handicap hurdles um, and learnings. Um, if you go to probably two, three low lights and if you come by hurdles handicaps and helps to be more honest um go for um some of the highlights you have experienced through the journey what did you like very much and where would you see room for improvement 
you know, this is really from my point of view running a yeah. I'm small asking company, exactly. not a, a 2,000, 5,000 people company. So I won't over-engineer the CRM anymore. Thinking back all the time, it has to be like this, green here, yellow there, functions there, doing this there. It's like a web page um, in, in the early times. It has to be very, very, very special. So we decided for us, go with what the companies offer, go with what the vendor offers, and make sure there is enough room to grab other features, other functions, whenever you have the need not be closed in that shop mm -hmm. for being able to do only this. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Look for the company behind. It's nice to work with a Salesforce or with a, a Microsoft. Um, is this amount of functionality and the ease of use mm -hmm. UX, UI, what you need? What you're looking for um, so they have great tools no question they can do anything way too much for what we need in that case yeah. uh, as a small company mm -hmm. um, and then for us it was quite important how easy and how good is the social media interaction could it easily mm -hmm. be done to have a formula to enter data could it be easily done to send from the data amount, we have some newsletters out to the people mm. out of one system that we don't have to copy it around again. And these mm. are the things uh, we had a look for it. And then for sure, the amount of money you have to pay per month. Um, please keep this overlooking as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this, this makes up for Perfect, famous last words, I think. <laughs> Looking at the time. Yeah, <laughs> so we are just yeah. on top of the hour. <laughs> so th thanks for the wise words. For the, actually, there have been some very wise words in there that more a consultant and also a buyer should remember. Um, well, thanks a lot for the time. Thanks a lot to everybody who still is there hopefully so that the symbol in the screen says we didn't scare away everybody so somebody is still <laughs> <Yeah>. there <laughs> sincerely we didn't get on linkedin so it's still red Means happens happens um, yeah technology <laughs> yeah. technology um yeah bye to cool. everybody and take well, care see you next week yo join us again have a nice